Believe me when I say happy Friday. Today is Friday the 19th of November 2021. The reason as to why I say that is because as a country we went into shock on Tuesday when we had the twin bombings that had some of us have loved ones that lost their lives. Others are still fighting for their lives. But we are here and we are alive. So trust me, we have a lot to thank God for as a country. UBC Lunchtime News is here. My name is Priscilla Naloga and we want to look at the big stories on national level we get to look at business international and also in the world of sports starting off with the biggest story this afternoon we get to look at elgon region being one of those mountainous areas with high rates of human rights violation due conflicts between communities and uganda wildlife authority in just a concluded survey on conservation by action for development also known as ACFORD, the findings indicate that human rights violations are instigated by conflicts over land ownership. There have been growing conflicts between indigenous communities staying around Gazette areas of Mount Elgon and Wildlife Authority. The conflicts between communities and Uganda Wildlife Authority stem from disagreements over land ownership. According to a survey on conservation carried out by Action for Development, the findings indicate that human rights violations are instigated mainly by land ownership, manner of eviction, and poor boundary demarcations. The survey is titled promoting equitable, just, and accountable conservation in Mount Elgon area. And the conflict is as a result of the fact that, one, the community members do not appreciate the fact that they can actually conserve at the same time, use or utilize the, the protected area. In the process of implementation of conservation laws by Uganda Wildlife Authority, this gives rise to human rights violation and in the process draws a line between conservation and respect of human rights. Some of the people feel that the boundaries were drawn um, unfairly and so they feel that part of their land, which was not necessarily part of the protected area, is in there and so they want to forcefully get it back. But Although there are a number of laws governing conservation, some of the laws apart from ambiguity are also not known to communities due to limited awareness. The head of League and Corporate Affairs at Uganda Wildlife Authority, Chemonges Sabila, says the conflicts between O and communities arise from land entitlement by communities. He says there is also untold hostility from some indigenous communities. They want to enter in as and when they wish. And of course that has caused a lot of issues because a forest is supposed to be protected. Some of the community members or some of the frontline community members are arrogant. They feel they were evicted illegally. Uwa has had a number of unresolved cases in courts of law for over 10 years. Nonetheless, he says there are several initiatives to restore harmony between the two parties. As long as people believe that the land belongs to them and they're entitled to it and they're fighting for it, and there is no decision that has come out to say, yes, this land is a national park or this land is community land, there is still uh, issues. And we hope that uh, these cases that have stayed for over 20 years in court may soon be, be, be resolved. 
Bottom line, there is need for deliberate efforts to restore calm between the two parties through continuous dialogue and harmonization of governing laws. The survey was carried out in the districts of Manafa, Sironko, Namisindwa, and Mbale. Susan Naonga reporting for ABC TV. Leaders in Buriso are calling for a multi-sectorial approach to settle the issue of power disappearance in the area. This comes after a reasonable number of electric poles submerged in the recently raised water levels of Lake Albert. Details in this story. Among the affected installations are Bulisa District Hospital, Bulisa Health Center 4, Health Center 3, Bulisa Headquarters, among others. Business here cannot move as it used to. We have a general hospital, we have a health center 4 here, and we have other health center series. These require power 24-7. We have vaccines that we keep in our fridges. We can't preserve them well. Now we have to incur a higher cost of running generator. You know how expensive it is in running generators. Electricity infrastructure in this area was submerged by the raising water levels of Lake Albert, which made it impossible to sustain power supply in three sub-counties of Butiaba, Bulisa and Chiguera. What is required of government to provide an alternative line to make sure that the people of Bulisa are lit? I know it is something that was not maybe foreseen, but again, the question is, for how long are we going to wait? Yeah, since uh, this flood, since the flood started, that was the time when we lost power, and uh, almost I think that could be like a, a year. Leaders in the district are calling for multi-sector intervention to restore power for the resumption of several businesses. We face dangers of losing lives. So the best people can do now, if you feel you have somebody who needs that attention, you rush your patient either to Hoima or to Kampala. Hmm? But here, there are challenges. You can go to theater, and along the way, there's no fuel in the generator. The digitization of government systems is likely to be jeopardized as the district is crying for high operation costs to run generators. Uganda Electricity Distribution Company Limited has clarified for the disenabling of the power infrastructure and laid a plan for the short-term fixture. The entity has applied for the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development to support the restoration exercise. Surveying team to ensure that we have the right scoping of work so that even if we are to do a diversion of the line from the existing corridor to the adjacent corridor, we know how much it will cost or what it will take to have that line uh, diverted. Three sub-counties are being affected since the waters of Lake Albert flooded villages in Bulisa, power supply and other related social services is unreliable. Uganda has announced the forthcoming e-government excellence awards where government ministries, departments and agencies are recognized the for the role system. they are playing in e-government adoption. The theme is bold digital government embracing disruptive technologies. Mark Wadulo is there and reports back to us. The annual awards started in 2019 to motivate increased e-government uptake in public service by the National IT Authority of Uganda. These awards will enable sharing of experiences among various government entities so as to nurture common vision of innovative administration, access to information and enhancing service delivery to citizens. Despite being mandated with the responsibility to take all government services online by 2026, the authority still recognizes the gaps that are challenging e-government adoption. Now there's a lot of discussion in, within government going on around smart devices and how to make them more affordable, including the most recent assembly plant which was brought into the country uh, for, for smartphones and tablets to make these devices more affordable. But ultimately, we need to lower the price of internet and we need to bring down the price of hardware devices, phones, smartphones especially. Over 80 ministries and 30 government agencies have been nominated. So far, 50% of Uganda's ministries, departments and agencies provide at least one e-service and 13% of the intended services are accessible by smartphone. 
Citizens have also been cautioned to use their electronic devices responsibly. There should be more ways for us now to, to work harder around even citizens reporting. Can we have an app that can uh, allow citizens very quickly to capture and place and place these, uh, these issues quickly in, into a central place where we can report, you know, like a call center where there's crime and police. And I know the police is doing a lot already on that. This year's NITA UE Government Excellence Awards will commence with an expo starting on the 3rd December, running till the 10th of December, 2021. Wadulo Makanold, reporting for UBC News at the Uganda Media Center in Kampala. Bold digital government embracing disruptive technologies. That's definitely the way to go. Away from that, in the health sector, we get to look at the step minister for health in charge of general duties, Hanifa Kawoya, worried about the increasing maternal mortality rate in the country. According to the Minister of Health, statistics about 15 to 16 pregnant mothers die every single day from giving birth. Hanifa Kawoya appeals to stakeholders in the health sector to partner with government to fight this challenge. The increasing maternal mortality rate in the country is worrying health experts in the country. Minister of State in charge of general duties, Hanifa Kawoya, says about 16 expectant mothers die every day while delivering. She encouraged stakeholders in the private sector to continue working with Minister of Health to overcome this challenge. Minister Kawoya says over 68% of the population in Uganda access health care from the private sector, which she thinks will help to reduce the increasing maternal mortality rate. Like approximately 15 pregnant women in Uganda continue to die every day. This is very worrying. Minister Kawoya made the remarks during the Mari Stops Uganda Partnership Day held at Golf Course Hotel in Kampala. Kawoya appealed to stakeholders to support government in mobilizing communities to go for vaccination against COVID-19 virus. She appealed to parents to take care of their children, especially girls, to avoid teenage pregnancies. In the child during this pandemic, it's a very concern with the body that even if you hear that uh, some of our parents are uh, outside of crying to open their schools, yes, they want the students to go back to the schools, but some of us in corner want to send our children back to the schools and give responsibility to the school management because the time they are being with them, they are part of the country director, Maristops Uganda, Dr. Karo Sechimpi, says since they started 30 years ago, communities using family planning methods have reached 1.7 million. Dr. Orala Chaus from the Ministry of Health commended Maristops Uganda and other development partners in the health sector for the effort in fighting case of maternal mortality rate in the country. Report or review what was the and beginning from the beginning of January up to now, the information which we have that we lost about 689 mothers. Those are the ones who have died from dying in the world in the institutions. Actually, in the week of the 42nd week, that's in November, on the 2nd, we lost 17, 17 mothers. And we know which person.
I'm Navka Farida and Salongo Kasivante. Thank you, Nafuka Farida and San Ngo Kasibante. We get to take a short commercial break. When we return, we get to see our business desk and the news that is making headlines this Friday. Grow together with one of Uganda's largest companies. Apply for MTN shares for as low as 100,000 Uganda shillings. And when you apply using MTN Mobile Money, you get 10 free extra shares for every 100 shares you apply for. Dial star 165 star 65 hash or use the MyMTN app to apply now. The terms and conditions of the offer and other important information are set out in the prospectus. For assistance, visit any MTN service center or Stanbic Bank branch countrywide or a licensed broker. It's the festive season and we love it. <laughs> and that means it's time to celebrate with GoTV. Come with me. So get your Go Coder and GoTV value for 25,000 shillings to watch with the whole family. And if you're feeling extra festive, upgrade to our best package yet GoTV Super. Something to look forward to. Download the My GoTV app for more information. Super. We all deserve a super festive season. And with GoTV, there's every reason to love it. It's Freaky Friday from Airtel. Buy or gift. Buy or give. Get freaky too. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to load a Freaky Friday bundle for you to enjoy the best offers on voice and data. To buy a bundle for friends and family, dial star 149 star 10 star 5 hash. Freaky Friday with Airtel. Buy or gift a bundle today. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to get started. Airtel, the smart smartphone network. It's no secret that ICT makes learning easy. The strides made in our field could not be possible without it. And now we can watch our favorite show. Ah, my radio is my best friend. UCC provides an enabling regulatory environment and policy guidance for healthy competition. We also facilitate ease of doing business in the communications sector through licensing, standardization, spectrum management, tariff regulation, rural communication development and consumer empowerment. An informed consumer is an empowered consumer. UCC supports local content and innovations. Driving the development of a robust communication sector in Uganda is Uganda Communications Commission. Grow together with one of Uganda's largest companies. Apply for MTN shares for as low as 100,000 Uganda shillings. And when you apply using MTN Mobile Money, you get 10 free extra shares for every 100 shares you apply for. Dial star 165 star 65 hash or use the MyMTN app to apply now. The terms and conditions of the offer and other important information are set out in the prospectus. For assistance, visit any MTN service center or Stanbic Bank branch country wide or a licensed broker. Raising Voices. As a mother, my children depend on me to make this world a safer place for them. I'm not afraid to act when I see violence in the home and in my community. I promise to talk to my neighbors and friends about how we can nurture and protect the children. In this time of COVID, what is your promise to the children of Uganda? Because a violence-free childhood is everyone's right. Raising Voices. Welcome back. It's still the UBC Lunchtime News. My name is Priscilla Naloga and we do continue on into our business news where we get to look at a MIOGA fund that was uh, created in 2019, the purpose of which was actually to bring income to households. But today, State Minister for Microfinance, Haruna Cheyune Kasolo, has invited a MIOGA circles in Katikamu and Bamnanika counties to address the challenges faced while administering the program. One of the 
key findings in various regions is the mismanagement of the program by the administrators. We do have Wadulo and Juma who bring us this report. Despite registering irregularities in various parts of the country, some Emyoga program beneficiaries in Katikamu and Bamunanika counties in Luero district have started benefiting. There are reports of improved livelihoods for beneficiaries, encouraging more uptake from various citizens. <laughs> State Minister for Microfinance, Haruna Kasolo, has pledged to enhance well-performing circles with a sum of up to 20 million Ugandan shillings. To add 20 million to what we earlier gave for them, uh, and I think they, they will now be able to buy a, a much more... Uh, bigger and, uh, and uh, brand new car. Despite the project's success in these regions, various groups reveal hindrances in the process. Government established the Emioga Microfinance Program in August 2019 to improve household incomes through circles, targeting 18 specialized categories in the informal sector. Wadulo Makanold for UBC News in Luero District. Presidential initiative on wealth and job creation is definitely something that you can go register, be a part of the circles and benefit to increase your household income. Away from that, National Drug Authority has instructed 15 veterinary stores in Ruero, Nakasongola, Nakaseke and also Akiso District to cross immediately. These were not in compliance with the authorities' laws, regulations and some were in possession of illegal installation of veterinary drugs. The investigations were carried out in the districts of Luelo, Nakasongola, Nakaseke and Wakiso on a compliance monitoring by the National Drug Authority to veterinary drug stores. The authority visited 90 veterinary drug stores, both private and public, and out of these, 15 were closed immediately and impounded drugs from 13 stores. Illegal installation of veterinary drugs mishandling of drugs, poor clarification of drugs by the sellers were major challenges in the districts. A number of times we find people whom we have licensed to sit in the outlet as qualified uh, veterinarians, they are leaving unqualified personnel, like their wives, their daughters, their girlfriends and relatives who are not qualified to sit in the veterinary drug outlets. Although some had licenses, this could not resist the authority from confiscating the drugs due to poor limited compliant measures. We have also been finding a number of outlets that are keeping vaccines. They have been storing them inappropriately. This is not only for the private outlets, but even in the public sector, specifically the district local government offices of the, the production department. So when we go and we find that they have been compromised. The quality of the vaccines have been compromised. We don't leave the vaccines there because if they have lost their potency due to poor storage, you cannot let them again go ahead and what? And sell to the public or administer to the animals. According to Wakiso Veterinary Officer Kiwangu Andrew, they have created awareness and informed veterinary doctors about the laws but have refused to comply. With this collaboration, we shall weed out all people who are selling drugs illegally and we are going to to clean and wipe out all people who are doing the treatment of animals and the clinical practice illegally. The authority is to distract the illegal veterinary drugs and give access to these doctors to take action in following the right procedures. Lydia Chomkama, UBC News. Well, thank you so much, Lydia Chomkama, for that story. This brings us to the close of UBC Lunchtime News. For updates between now and UBC Lelo, as well as UBC News tonight, you can turn to our Twitter handle, which is at UBC TV Uganda for updates. Until then, have yourselves a wonderful afternoon.